<laughs> back from vacation, but was it really a vacation? Sarah, it yes. was so bad. Episode oh. three, three, five. Yes. Uh, yeah, I went to Pittsburgh. I thought it was going to be nice family, mm. whatever. It was just one of those things where everything went wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a planes, trains, and automobiles. It was. Of. Yeah. Isn't that crazy how sometimes the trip... It's like, it's going to be like that the whole way. I haven't been on many trips where it starts just completely chaotic. And then it's like, oh, well, the rest of the trip was lovely. And it makes you realize how, like, you're just one thing away from, like, being in the Bates Motel. Totally. What, like, ha- being stranded on the side of the road. Please tell me about how you ended up in a, well, <laughs> a hotel like I'll spare you as- the details, but it was just one of those things where, like... You know, we didn't make our, our our connection kept getting delayed and blah blah blah. Then it's the middle of the night. And we're with a seven year old. Oh my god! It's like, well, what do we do here? But yeah, we had to stay overnight in Detroit. Finally, got to Pittsburgh, and then things were not ideal there. But I was so grateful that you um, were able to watch my kitty cat. Oh, and let me tell you, I love your cat. And I was, I mean, I'm like laughing to myself as you're describing your like Bates Motel thing because I just want to show you a picture. Of you know, and since everybody can't see it, your Just your cracking reaction open DC is. Here. Oh yes, but she go is. Ahead, yeah. Um, so when we were on our our road trip, we had like miscalculated how long it would take to get to one of the um, parks, yeah. And so we had to make a stop at this random town in Las Vegas, not Las Vegas, Nevada, called Pahrump, which I just was cracking up That's because I hilarious. couldn't get the the. Uh, uh, Little Drummer Boy song on my head. <laughs> I was thinking that the whole time. I'm like, have they heard this joke here? It's great. <laughs> have they heard, have they heard so that So this is the hotel room that was one of two dog-friendly hotels. One was fully booked. I can't okay. imagine it would be much better than this. But okay. this is what the hotel room looked like. That's how we walked into it. Uh, oh. <laughs> like, I didn't do anything Oh, my to God. It. For real? Yeah. That's how the bed was? Yeah. So, so the bed is like... It looks like so- someone Somebody, was sleeping in my bed. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. What do you think happened? I there? don't know. It or or I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, it just looked, and I was like, "Oh, it's not dirty though." I wouldn't it, say it. It, it th- was. It was because, like, I took my shoes off and I walked across the carpet. First mistake. There was a wet spot. That is, and ter- myster- mysterious wetness is one of my least favorite things on the planet. That is one of your fears. But, worst. Because in New York City, it, I, I was like, oh, there's mysterious wetness everywhere. And I don't know where... Bathrooms? Yeah, I know. You know how I hate that. Yes, I so, do. So, yeah. So I felt, yeah, on the... Uh, uh, right. Yeah. But I had to share that little well, picture did you, with you. When you were at my house, did you have to, like, you know, fight off any burglars? Thank or? goodness, no. And and I learned that uh, no burglar would ever even be able to get into your house. <laughs> because when my dumbass locked myself out... Out, I tried everything. Stop. Let me tell you guys. Okay. So I had spent the night at my friend Morgan's house. We had gone out to the bars the night before, and I wanted to make sure that I get up really early. I think I had something to do where I had to like be at your house early to like check on the cat, and then I was going to go back home. And so it's like six o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. that I leave my friend's house and come over to your house. Yeah. A Ten minute drive. I get here, I open up the door, everything's fine, I walk in, I like go to take a nap, and I go to plug my phone in and it's dead. Or right. go to like, or I don't have As a charger. Per or whatever. As for usual. Like I need a little charger. So I'm like, oh, it's in my car. So like being the smart person that I am, I take the keys with me. I'm like, just in case, I will walk out of your garage door, like the ho- the door from the house to the into the garage, and somehow it's like one of those doors that magically locks behind me but some for some reason that happened to be a key that i didn't have like i didn't yeah we don't have it okay it's like why would they do this we don't lock that doorknob ever (sighs) yeah um and so it just didn't occur to me that you might yeah and so but we should have the key landlord right (laughs) so i don't know why we don't to begin with and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to climb over some fences and look at every single thing. And I, you bet <laughs> you your butt. You climbed over? At, well, and then I couldn't figure out how to open I that gate. I could have gate. told you that at least. Like, you know, yeah. And You climbed? Well, I mean, I had to get, I had to like check all the doors. How and did you climb it? The gate on the side? Yes. I mean, just hop, skipped, and jumped. For real? 
Yes, real early. And then I thought, somebody's going to think I'm breaking into this house. <laughs> and so so now here I am. Good like, thing you're white. Out. No joke, right? Yeah. And like a female who's like, you Yeah, know, blonde lady. Oh my God. I just look ridiculous. A little what, crazy. what were you wearing at the time? I oh, kept picturing you in like your jammies. jeans and a t-shirt. It okay. wasn't anything, you know, and it wasn't like last night's clothes or something. Like I had all my <laughs> stuff. I looked normal. Sarah's walk of and, shame. Right. It wasn't even like that. So <laughs> I uh, uh, end up finally like getting back into the garage, but then I can't get into the house. So now I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? My phone's inside. It's dead. I oh. can't call a locksmith. Okay. Because my phone's dead. So I had, I, thank God I had my laptop with me in the car. So okay. I had to get my laptop, find an outlet in your garage, plug it in, hold it close enough to get Wi Fi from your house, and thank God I remember the password. And I. Sarah, this then, is crazier than I thought. I, ha- I couldn't, like, oh. I had to download a program to, like, make calls because it wouldn't call from, like, FaceTime. Audio wouldn't work to something that's not on Wi Fi. And. Like, because my phone was dead, it wouldn't let me call, you know, using my laptop or whatever. So wow. finally, thanks to Google Voice, thanks, shout out to Google Voice, that like downloaded it and I was able to make some calls and I'm like holding the laptop up as I like speak into it. Because you know how service is here at yeah, your house. Yeah, yeah, And uh, thank God there was a 24. I called like five people and they're like, oh yeah, nope, sorry. And then nobody offered any like, so here's, here's something, something you could do. Like, do they not realize that like, I'm uh, this is... It's not like I'm casually calling a locksmith. There's usually like a, it's kind of like. How much did that run you? You don't want to know. Tell me right now. Well, first to get into the, I was like, okay, get into the house. That's fine. And he's like, I'm real sorry, but if it's, I'm going to have to break the lock to like get in. I said, oh, okay. He's like, would well, you want me to replace it? I'm like, well, yeah, you know, sure. <laughs> Nowhere along the lines did he even give me a quote for what this would cost. Oh, no. A quote for what the labor, and you know how I'm going to do it yourself or. Yeah. Nobody, I could have picked up a $15 lock and done that. No oh my problem. God, I'm so what sure. What do you think? Uh, okay, a, a, I 8 a.m. It ended up being like 8 a.m. by the time I was able to get a hold of, of a locksmith. Maybe 200 320 something dollars. Oh my God. And I was like, well, you know what? That is cheaper than uh, what it would have cost to like stay at a hotel or something. I was like thinking like that. I had to like justify it. <laughs> oh no, that is terrible. So, I'm so sorry. No, it was, it was a learning lesson. And, and it was in my mind, I'm like, man, this feels like one of those hot mess kind of days. But I, I was like, I'm way too responsible for that. I got this. I grew out of this phase of my life. Like, what's happening here, Sarah? And um, I thought I had been so responsible taking the keys with me. But that's what I... So. See, I just hit the mic again. We're, <laughs> shit. Amateurs. But that's what I mean about how you think everything's in order. Right. But all it takes is one little thing, and then you're like on the street, and no locksmith will come. Yes. And you think, what have I done with my life? That's why I was laughing before we went on the air, because I had to know, like, as your days were being like insane yeah. and, you know, stressful and all these little things going wrong. Also mine was at home and I'm like, what the heck is happening in the, and sometimes I wonder, I'm like, is this Susie's stress right now? Or is this mine? Because <laughs> I'm sensing that maybe she's dealing with something or like, I got to check because I don't know if it's hers or mine. Sometimes yeah. it's both. Yeah. Double trouble yeah. over here. Emotional contagion. Or <laughs> yeah, right. I learned that in our book club book. <laughs> really? Yes. That's a thing. Yeah, in the an- uh, sympathy or uh, oh, uh, yeah. our symphony with animals, it's all about em- empathy and animals, and how emotions are contagious. And you yeah. see some dogs. And I'm sorry, I animals. put that on you then. Oh, you didn't. It's okay. Your cat was so comforting and nurturing, and I love. Who knew I was a cat person? See, you're well. I'm just a your cat person. Yeah, because it's basically like we have a dog. Yeah, that cat is fetches, <sighs> and like you'll be yes, like, it does fetch. It's so weird. And when the doorbell rings, she goes and runs it's so to the funny. door. Like, what? I didn't know I got a dog. She definitely fetches. And when I saw it, because I was like doing what I normally do with my dogs, like take a little ball and like throw it. And I wasn't, I don't know what and I was she expecting. After and it. she totally did. And then like brought it back <laughs> close enough to me where I was like, well, well done. Sometimes when the doorbell rings, you know what they're delivering is some new Fabletics pants. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy if they do. Ooh, <laughs> Ding dong. Be Best pants ever ones. are coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. You need to buy some more. Well, I need to update with some like uh, summer. Yes. Yeah, summer gear. fashion. Everything I have is darker colors. Yes. Fabletics are the pants for you. 
they, you know, this company founded by Kate Hudson, who's freaking adorable, but it's stylish gym wear that you can really wear anywhere. Um, super comfy, but also stylish and affordable. That's what made me so impressed is that it's high quality, but it's not going to cost you your whole bank account. Um, it's a one-stop shop for affordable athletic wear, yoga pants, running gym gear, sports bras, shoes, accessories, everything you need. And they have a deal for our listeners, probably because our listeners are the freaking best. I, I definitely know that they are. <laughs> and you get two pairs of their leggings for only $24 total. What? To 99 <laughs> I love that you're acting surprised. And is it always two pairs? Yes. Oh, damn. That's the best deal. It's a $99 value. When you sign up for the VIP program, just go to fabletics.com slash brain candy to take advantage of the deal. It's fabletics.com slash brain candy. You get those two pair of leggings for only 24 bucks. It's $12 for a pair of leggings. That's why I say, what? I know. Also free shipping on orders over $49. And Sarah pointed out that they do not pill these pants, which sometimes I guess those leggings are like that. Mm -hmm. And so they're... And you can wear them on trips to hell, like I just went to. And if I had worn mine, I would have been able to sleep in something other than oh, no. the buff. Because, oh, you know, when oh, you yeah. they take your luggage. Yes, and you can't be, like, putting on the same dirty clothes. No. It's oh, my a, God, I should have worn Fabletics so well. Yeah, then you would have been comfy. Live and, live and learn. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. So let's start talking about things that we care about. Oh, I care. Well, as I mentioned, I care about your cat. And when I got here, I asked Suze if, uh, all you listeners out there, if she knew about her cat's obsession with the bathtub. Oh my God. What the heck is going on with that? Every time I get in the tub, which as you know, is several times a day, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> she jumps up and sits there and dips her paw in and licks it. So gross. And then also when I'm done... And the tub is still wet. She goes in and like rolls around yeah. in it. It's very odd. So I'm taking a bath and I was like, oh, I'm like, got to be like Susie when I'm here. And I'll like take a bath too, which was lovely. And I especially love that you have the little stopper for the bathtub. Yeah. Whatever that. She's got a good stopper that's like, <laughs> I like that. It's good. Little, those little things. Put it on my Amazon favorites list. That's, that's hilarious. It's that good. Um, and... Uh, so I was like doing the whole like beauty routine. I'm like doing a facial and I like get out to like put the facial on or the face mask on, like rub it in. And as I hop out of the bathtub and now I'm like standing in your mirror, like naked, like doing my face mask. Yeah. Behind me, I hear some noise. It's scary. Your cat then fell into the bathtub and then did exactly what you would imagine a cat who fell in the bathtub did freaked out. And then I'm like, Wah! And then I'm like, oh no. And I think the cat's going to like drown or something. So I turn around to like reach down and grab the cat. And the cat like then uses my arm as leverage, jumps out and goes like taking off like, well, like a cat out of your bath. (laughs) A cat out of hell. A scared cat. Yes. Like a cat out of hell. (laughs) Out of your, and then I, so I'm like running out because I'm thinking, oh no, she's got a nice leather couch. What if the cat jumps on the couch and is soaking wet? And like, this is weird. What do I do with a wet cat all over the house? And then I start like running down the hallway and then all of a sudden in my mind, the fact there are like windows everywhere. And also I was like, wait, aren't there like cameras at all over? I was just going to say, I can't be running around her house in the buff with my weird face mask on. And so I'm like, Oh, the cat will be fine. And so I go back into the, and then just the real thought I was having was like, man, I, the cat, we were friends. So, and I don't know if it's going to be the same after this, especially since I tried to like grab her and, we were fine after she dried off. And there were a few tense minutes where she like looked at me like, you did Stink this. eye. Yeah. And then just just like licking herself. Oh my God. And like God. went in the corner. But then she like came back You have back so around. many mishaps. It was hilarious. But that cat, I, I, I do think she has the potential for wanting to climb your fence and escape out of your roof. I was definitely scared she yeah, was going to do that. She a few can't times. reach it. Okay, good. In the courtyard. I had to do, look, give that a good look. Yeah, we did too. And like, I'm like, could her weight, could these branches support her weight? Sarah. Every time I would go out and I like check on her every half an hour. Are you still here? Okay, oh my good. Oh God. So I'm like, she's black cat in the middle of the night. With no, I'm never going to be able to find her. I, I need to check the tapes of like, Oh, I I'm never, sure it'll be funny. <laughs> I never looked at our cameras while I was away, but um, now I think I might. I think you should. Cause it was, it was certainly fine. And then in my head I was like, man, 
I do talk to myself a lot. It would make more sense when there's a camera there to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it made it okay. Well, you were talking about um, dogs, and that actually is one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Did you see the article in The Atlantic about how dogs have evolved quickly to have those uh, puppy dog eyes? Your cat's paws underneath the door. <laughs> She's really wanting to get in right now. That is Your the funniest face. thing. She yeah. misses me. She's clearly. trying to open the door. Um, how fast did this happen? They said it's extra, extra fast. And I, they didn't say this in the article, but I wondered, is it just that we're breeding them oh. to have the, you know, when you get one That's with cute point. eyes, then you're more likely to, yeah. but they seem to indicate that this is just because the reward is so great. I think so. You know, and I'm also kind of thinking, you know how we've talked about how, you know, what during um, the early days, back in the days, uh, when children were like part of the workforce, that they weren't as like, I don't know, what's the word? Like not coddled, but they, they weren't seen as these like, oh my gosh, the kid is so special and da da da. It was like, no, this, this kid is here to work, work on the farm, work and da 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 da. And maybe it's how we have thought about dogs where they used to be like part oh, of the yeah. workforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Labor. And now they're these companion things that we, you know, I, I, land is out of town, so I come up here and I worry like, oh my God, should I leave the dogs outside and blah, blah, blah. And in reading this book about animals, or I was watching some video and they were saying like, oh, this dog was left in the backyard for three years and just had, you know, people go by and feed it, whatever. And I was like, wait, the dog was in the backyard for three years. My dogs are going to be fine <laughs> with the door open and the, in their backyard for six hours. Yeah, I had to like remember that a dog is still a dog and you know, I've, I've, maybe it's because I don't have kids. I've turned my dog it, into yeah. like these babies that, so I wonder if because we've almost. Yeah. Our use of dogs yeah, is now has changed. about companionship yes. and emotional well being rather right. than any kind of help. Hunting mm -hmm. first. The, where's the animals? Like what scare yeah, away the useless. rabbits? Like, I mean, we can all agree. You know, we, we have two dogs and still have a rabbit problem at our house. <laughs> so they're doing nothing. They don't even chase those guys? No. Oh my Bo God. Would, Bo would definitely chase that. When we were camping, Bo, oh my gosh, would like do the point thing with her hand and like do that. And I was like, oh, look what at you. What is that? They do that when they're yeah, hunting? Yeah, like when they, when they see something and they, and, and that was adorable. real cute. Like Sigmund saw her do that a few times and then we were out playing and then Sigmund did it. And I was like, who are you kidding? You can't smell for shit. Like you can't even find the food that I throw right in front of your face. You barely even have uh, olfactory senses, buddy. I know. The, d the d designer dogs are useless. Completely. I know. They're and just pretty. I was just like. You want to be tough right now, and you're doing what Bo's doing, but you don't even know what that means, Sigmund. They were saying that the the thing that makes puppy dog eyes is they have these muscles that human beings don't really have that create that thing, yeah. the adopt me look. Yes. And that they, it said they do it more when humans are interacting mm -hmm. with them. And um, I was surprised though to read that, well, I should have, I shouldn't have said that. If you were to guess yeah. what lights up their brain more, oh. human interaction or feeding, what would you guess? Well, I mean, I would guess feeding. Why? Because I would have guessed I, humans. I feel like... Because that's correct. The, the humans food. Have, are, are the providers of the food. And I think... Oh my God, they, we're just a conduit for yeah, like... Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Because well, I think the only way that I've ever motivated... I, you, I mean, praise sort of works, but oh. if you're training a dog, there's you're no amount of, of like, oh, who's a good boy? Okay, that I get. That, what I was imagining though was, you know, when you come home oh, and they yeah. lose their shit, they yeah. don't really do that about food. Oh, I have seen them do that about <laughs> some food that I've had. Okay, but generally yeah. it's like they're happy. They yes. want to eat it, but they they're not lose losing their shit it. when they. When you come home. Yeah. Sometimes I yeah. think it's because they have no sense of like permanence. Or like object they thought permanence. You were gone yeah, I think it's that. Yeah. Okay. And then like my dogs will do weird things when I leave the house, like uh, refuse to eat their food if they like if a I'm hunger leaving strike. because like I think that they're rationing it. Oh my 
my God. They're like, well, I don't know when you're the hell you're going to be gone back. So I got to like save this and maybe like not because then when I come home, they'll immediately go to the bowl and eat it all. Like, oh, good. She's back. So I can eat this and then she'll give me more. It feels very like. I bet you're right. Like I never plan, thought about they, that. They've. There's a lot of planning that these dogs are doing that I am not privy to. <laughs> there are also some, there's some, somehow they've worked out a system of who gets which bed. Cause we have like two dog beds next to the couch and I've assigned one to one dog and one to the other. But then every now and then one will be on the other one and one will, they'll switch. And then I'll try to go put them back and no, no, Bo, that's your bed segment. That's yours. They look at me like, Ugh. Not this week. Yeah, right. And like they we have this worked back. out. Right. And I was like, okay, fine. Well, you guys work it out the, I, wherever you want to sleep. I thought I'm just trying to like enforce some, but I have no control in that house. I'll tell you though, there is a food that makes me really excited, like the dogs. Yeah. What? Green Chef. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm on it right now uh, in the vegetarian. I'm doing a, a vegetarian, like, you know, situation. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And I like the customization that I don't find with other. I'm companies. glad you're back on the uh, vegetarian train. I feel better. That's nice. Because yeah. you've always wanted to do that. I'm right. glad to Thank hear you. you're back on the train. Yeah. Um, Green Chef is great because it's a meal plan delivery service that it lets you choose a wide array of easy to follow um, lifestyles and they have select organic ingredients. And basically the deal is they send you the recipe and all the stuff you need to cook it. So it's super easy. It's very yummy flavorful recipes for your lifestyle, um, new recipes every week too, which, you know, so you won't get bored. It's all a variety. Cause when I make my own meals, it's mm-hmm. going to be the same yeah, for right, right, all right. the time. So that's really nice. And it just makes life way more convenient. Um, Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company oh, yeah. and meal plans include paleo, plant powered, vegan and vegetarian, pescatarian, keto, gluten free, and omnivore. Um, so what else do you want? That's really everything. like every kind of yeah. type of, uh, plan. Except junk, <laughs> which Except is garbage. exactly what we want. Yes. Yeah, so for a total of $75 off, that's $25 off each of your first three boxes. Go to greenchef.us slash brain candy 75. That's a total of $75 off. It's $25 off each of your first three boxes. Go to greenchef.us slash brain candy 75. I made a great meal the other day and then it was so good and so simple that I text my brother who is uh, also like eats mostly a plant-based diet Mm -hmm. um, and he made the same meal at his fire station because he was in charge of like making food that day and he was like, ooh, that's a perfect one and made it and just like mixed some eggs into like a a, 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 sweet potato hash kind of thing. Yum. Delicious and so easy. And he was like, thank you. I'm like, "Uh I'll take all the credit. (laughs) So there you go. We're making your life better, people. That's what we do around here. I want to say one more thing about, well, I want to say probably like 5 million more things about your, uh, when I stayed at your house and how fun it was and how (laughs) fun it was. This is one of my favorite things, which is now my new goal. I was, I text Susie guys and I say, your, your house has become the bar now for organization and like, everything being in the right place. Because I'm not kidding. I don't know if this is because I know you so well, but I don't think it is. I think it's because you're so smart where everything is in this house. I would need something and I go, okay. Give me an example. Like I needed a lighter. Okay. And I was like, hmm, where would a lighter be? First drawer I open, right there. I'm like, nailed it. And then I needed a broom. I was like, where would a broom be? First drawer, nailed it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I need some saran wrap. First drawer, no nailed way. it right next to the. Uh, it makes sense. That's where you put the foil yeah. because if you were going to take something out of the right. oven, you need everything. Thank you. Ma- and trash bags, liners. For- I was like, <laughs> what would be the most convenient? I know the closest drawer to the trash can. Turn right around, open it up. There they are. I was like, damn, she is so <laughs> good. Hilarious. It was the best. I, I made a list because I was like going around the house and I was like, this is so funny. I feel so seen right now. It's tr- and it. Was like, like I feel like I'm tearing up actually because <laughs> I do it's see so you nice. and it, and like one of those kind of things that you know we do for ourselves that yeah. really help make our lives easier but nobody really right. gets There's to appreciate nobody, yeah, or, right. I appre- I see you and I appreciate I and understand you. 
every single little thought that went into it. Oh, I do. That's that so reminds nice. me. I do owe you a box of macaroni and cheese because now there's oh, one less. I'm glad you ate that. Nobody eats it over it here. Delicious. So, <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. Well, I because I went into the refrigerator and uh, we had had our brain candy meet up and there was a bunch of leftover pizza. Yeah. And. I think I had higher hopes of how long that pizza would last. Than, <laughs> we threw it out. Than, you know. We threw out a lot of it because mm-hmm. you can't fit it right. all. And then there were some left, but you know, f- five days is pushing out. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I can't eat this. I like cooked it and then I'm like, this Sarah, doesn't smell. The Sarah, cheese isn't melting right. She says she likes coming over here because I have a lot of junk food. Mm. Oh my God. And <laughs> one, one night, I don't know. I got like the munchies at like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I What'd found, you go for? Well, we had all the leftover candy from the... A lot of candy. That was a, if you watched the video, <laughs> you would see hilarious, hilarious, like like midnight. I don't even think I was conscious. Like I was it probably like sleepwalking. You were to foraging. The, and then, then I like went and got a handful of M&Ms and like dropped a few on the floor. And I'm like, well, I, I got... I, got to make sure I pick everyone up. And I was like doing it in the dark. And oh my God. So I'm sure if people, somebody would think like, man, is she like drunk in there? No, nope, that's just like midnight. Need some snacks. And yeah. I'm definitely checking the footage you should. for your the, foraging. The, the, the thing I, I now I, I regret not opening up is uh, you were almost out of those delicious cookies that you love, but I like couldn't bring myself to open a brand new bag of them. So I was oh like, I'll just wait till next time they're open and I'll... Okay. Don't yeah, worry. I, I, put, gotta... I put work in on the Ritz crackers. <laughs> Sarah's obsessed with the Ritz crackers. I love them. It's so weird. Yeah. What is, is that know. from your childhood? Do you think? I think I'm obsessed with a lot of that stuff. Not like a, well, kind of obsessed. But well, remember how before I left when I was telling you how the reason I take baths, yes. my whole life, yeah, and I'm obsessed with them and I hate showers is because we grew up without a shower. There Correct. was no shower in my house. <laughs> And so when we were about to go to Pittsburgh and we knew we were going to maybe stay there, I was like, well, we have got to fix that shower because Mm -hmm. I might love a bath. Now, Adam, however, (laughs) needs a shower. So I'm like, mom, get the plumber, come over, fix the damn thing and just pay with my card. So she did. And I was like, well, how much did that cost? Mm -hmm. After, let's see, 40 years (laughs) of no no showering. Uh. A hundred dollars. I mean, one third the price of a locksmith <laughs> for so much more enjoyment and pleasure. A locksmith, right? That's hilarious. I just so did you like, take a shower at your house for the no, first time? No, no, because Sarah, I have taken showers. Right. I just hate them. But that's, I was thinking, like at your house, maybe just to like christen it, oh, like oh, you'll do it. And I didn't. No, I can't. I hate it. I was going to say how much to paint over the clown paintings, but then I was like, no, maybe I shouldn't say that because maybe she wants those up for forever. No, they're gone. The clown's gone. But Adam did use the shower, and since no one had ever used it, we discovered that the shower curtain Uh rod falls on top of us when we use it because it's not used to like the steam. (laughs) Oh my God. So every time you would take a shower, the the whole shower curtain would drop to the floor <laughs> on the rod and everything. You just didn't know that because no one was ever doing that in that house. Is it like one of those spring-loaded ones? It was like just plastic, kind of like, oh, garbage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Everything yeah. in that house is yeah. garbage. Sorry, Mom. It just yeah. is true. But we made it. Yeah. We survived. And now you have to survive this episode. Everyone's having to listen to this bullshit. Oh, no. They want to hear. This they is great. They do not. They do. It's so funny and it's so great. I'm trying to think of what else hilarious How happened. How funny, by the way, done. was episode 333 when oh, we were out of control? I thought it was so funny. And then I forgot to have Adam edit that bit. Of oh, I'm so glad out, he didn't. And Dahlia had to hear about my exploits. I was <laughs> gonna so... Remind her right now disturbed i am so happy that it turned out like that because it cracked me the heck up people were like i'm glad that you opened up you know we hear a lot about sarah (laughs) like i am not glad no more wine while podcasting oh more wine while podcasting by the way because we were talking about the cute dog thing i was reading this um article about why we compare kids to food like when we say like i want to eat you up oh yeah this is totally something i do i'm always wanting to uh they call it cute aggression like kind of how you want to like squeeze something but it was also talking about how like when you're pregnant and it'll say your baby is the size of a strawberry or whatever and how that became a thing and um 
just that I thought they were going to say that this is hardwired in the human brain, yeah. but they didn't. They said that oh, it's... I thought um, it was too. I feel like past studies have even kind of hinted that it was. She said that other cultures don't ha- don't even do like baby voice to babies. No. Some of them don't. That They call that... Um, Let's see. It's called... Oh, my oh, God. Oh, the oh, cat's in that's, here. That's the cat, not even us. So, oh, my God. He wrote all over my notes by stepping on my keyboard. Classic cat move. Okay. They called it a simplified register. Like, when we're like, oh, little well, baby. Yeah. That other cultures don't do that with babies. I, now I want to know what the long-term effects of that are. You think uh, towards humans, you mean? Yeah. Like, if you talk like that to kids? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like I got to get the cat out. What happens if you talk like that to a kid? Over And then what happens if you don't? Like, you know, there are those parents who talk to their children like adults, and they always seem like they're really mature at a really young age. But is that, are there good things to that? Maybe like not so good things to that? I always say that I'm like the baby whisperer, the kid whisperer, because You talk to them like regular. Yeah. Because I find it funny to be like, talk to a child like you would talk to your friend. And I feel like kids really like it. Yes, they do. Because they feel like special or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I I remember my mom's friend who always talked to us like that, and I always liked her for it. Was she funny or was she just serious biz? Uh, no, she was funny too. But she was like a woman who didn't have kids, and that was I think it was kind of like her thing. It kind of you know. Yeah. She had kind of like a Susie vibe. So um, even though you have kids. Yeah. Kid. But I just thought that was strange because. Wonder why we do it and what is with the food thing. Right. And then when did we start doing it? Because maybe this once again goes back to how we look at children. And is there a difference between cultures where children are more part of like the household labor? I guarantee you that that was the I think it is the moment that that changed. Yeah. And the your baby's the size of a watermelon or whatever the heck right. they say. Um, that began. They were saying, I think it was like with the internet when they would have like those baby sites. Yeah. Because they asked Baby Center. Um, and what to expect when you're expecting adopted it in 2008 huh. after it became so popular. Yeah. So there you go. Did you read that Cute book? Aggression. What to expect? Hell no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. What did you learn? Well, and the the thing is, I really should have just read up to the part where I was because, like, if you read too much, you're like, "Holy crap!" This really? Is all, like, it, I was. It felt like stuff. Was you it already scientific know, like, or what? Yeah, it was. It was written in a way that's easy to understand, and yeah, it was good. I just find that to be a total waste of time. Yeah, but a lot of it, I was like, "Okay, well, am I good?" Because. It's different for everybody. Well, that's why it's a waste to right, me. Right, because yeah. then I was thinking like, oh my God, am I going to have that? But no, I'm. Not, you're not. So that's what... Okay. Yeah. But man, people... Well, I think people really crave some... Yeah. Like what to expect. Right. They need some sort of... Because the um, unknown is scary. Right. It gives a little bit of a like, peace of mind. Right. If you're um, like, oh, I just had a little burp. Excuse me. <laughs> Another thing that gives me peace of mind yeah. is when I hydrate with liquid IV. Oh, I need a little bit of that in my life. <laughs> I did steal a couple of yours. So. Did you? Yes. Oh, good. And we had those for our uh, book club attendees mm-hmm. of the meetup because I feel like once people try it, then they're going to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Liquid IV is the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. They send out... These little packets of powder that are flavored. You can choose whatever flavor. Adam is most fond of the acai. Acai. Yes. Um, But they have lemon, lime, uh, berry, whatever. And um, you just throw it in your water and then it'll hydrate you two to three times faster and more efficiently than just like a water bottle all by itself. Plus it has vitamin C, B3, B5, all the Bs. Great for kids. Great for travel. Oh, yeah. Great for, you know, whatever the heck you're doing in the summer, going out for picnics and being all active. Mm -hmm. We love Liquid IV. We know you will too. And right now our listeners get a deal, 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code BRAINCANDY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter promo code BRAINCANDY. Get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code BRAINCANDY. Don't wait. Start hydrating properly today. Your kids will like it better. or It's much better than... A lot of the right. garbage, yeah, with including all the sugars and all that stuff. The uh, stuff we're drinking right, right. now. Don't <laughs> right. say anything. I won't say it. Um, 
<clears throat> so one other, like, uh, I feel like I, I need like Dolly to like turn this into a poll or something. Cause I had another funny thought while I was at your house <laughs> because, uh, so I'm all alone in this house. It's nighttime <laughs> for the night. No, I think it was morning cause I'm pretty regular and I had to go to the bathroom and I, you know, like, you know, number two, like you do. And I went into the bathroom and I didn't <laughs> shut two. the door. Like, okay. I, and then I had this moment where I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom with the door open in somebody else's house. This feels weird. Really? And so I wanted to, th- I wanted to ask you, like, if you were alone in somebody else's house, okay. would you feel comfortable yeah, going that's... to the bathroom with the door open? I would have thought yes. Yeah. But now I'm f- imagining that. And I think I might not be. Right. And it felt, I was like, I wonder why I feel like weird about this. But and you it's were all like the same thought about like me running through your house naked. It like, <laughs> this feels weird to do it at somebody else's house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when you make brown, you don't want to take any risks. I, I mean, and I was just like, mm, you this know feels that, odd. Can you believe some people just do that normally like in their the house? Open. Yeah, I can't. That's not never going to be me. If not. you do that, explain yourself. Anybody that's listening, because why? Right. And I feel like it's important to have things that yes, are Sarah. private and stuff that we. Like, and and I'm if not we're be saying that, one you of know, those families that's like, nope, no, because nope. that's gross, man. Yeah, I'm even kind of against like naked, to, like every, like you know, a lot oh, of nudity yeah. in the. Mm-hmm. I, I used why. to be like that, and then we became a naked family. Did you? Yeah, I think it was almost the bringing a child into it yeah because first of all once you do that literally delivering a child you just oh, like forget it right you lose a lot of the yeah you know modesty yes. and then also i kind of just wanted him to like not mm-hmm. think it was weird right because i hated that about my childhood being ashamed of my That's body and true. stuff and my family it was too much in the other direction so like I need a happy medium. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's at the age now where I just had the thought of like, okay, it's time to start, yeah. you know, having our own separate moments of yeah. nudity. <laughs> right. Unless you're like asking him to look at his bum. Yeah. Then, you know In what? which case. Go for it, kiddo. Well, yeah. Drop your drawers. <laughs> Let's have a look at your b-hole. Um, <sighs> I kept laughing about Rasputin's penis. Oh my gosh. Somebody else said that it was like debunked and that it was actually a, like a sea cucumber. And I say, <laughs> no, 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 not true. A sea cucumber? That's what they said. I was like, mm, Oh know. my God. What? But that seems. You see, you're not buying it. No. Okay. I don't know. We need, we need further testing. Needs that to be done. is really disappointing. Yeah. I didn't even think sea cucumbers were that big. Also, oh, yeah, they are really. They yeah. come in all shapes and sizes yes. too. <laughs> oh my god! And you know what they do, right? Who sea cucumbers? Not what happens really. when they get scared? No, I don't know. Oh, this is funny. This is like especially funny, and why they thought a penis was a sea cucumber, or vice versa. Why? That when you agitate sea cucumbers or, or to protect themselves, or at a moment, I don't know what it is, but they release this sticky white fluid. That looks exactly like what you think it would look like. They do not. Yes, they do. This was something that they told us when we were in Thailand and Johnny and Evan and like, or I think it was Johnny who did it, picked up a sea cucumber and like, it was like, oh, let's see if we can get it to. This happened when we were on challenge. They tried to ejaculate the cucumber. Yes. Because it does do. Did it work? I don't know, but I know it's real bad if you do it because it's like their last move before they're like going to die. That's awful. And also disgusting. I don't even think men should do that. That's Ugh. foul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the, allowed. Yeah. If there's a way that we could make that stop, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, I was reading. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. Like I'll change the subject. Yeah. Since that's gross. Um, a whiskey expert's guide to refining your palate. Oh. I thought you'd love this. The, okay. uh, it was a female. Uh, oh, I whisk- love that. Yeah, me too. And she was saying that she goes to Target and huh. smells all their candles and tries yes. to get a sense for what um you know what smell is what what and what she likes and what she picks up and stuff like that. Huh. I thought that was a good good bit of advice cuz we're all doing that anyway. And that's what they tell you like when you're <clears throat> wine tasting the best way to learn about what stuff smells like is you know you go to a, 
some tastings they'll have, or I went to one one time, that had all these different beakers with different things in them, like dirt and grass and rubber from a car tire. Yeah. And they were like, smell these things. Now smell the wine or vice versa. Okay. And you could smell, you're like, oh, now I get it. But you have to smell what, like, what does rubber tire smell like? Yeah. Because there really is that in wine. Right. And it's like the minerality and stuff like that. So it's like learning. Changes the scent. And the, the way, like, if you're uh, studying for your, I don't know, wine sommelier kind of test or whatever, you say just the best way to learn about wine is just taste a bunch of wines. From- but do you think there is a right answer? I know that they claim that there is. You know, this has these notes. Yeah, I but think so. I I almost think that that can really be dependent upon who's doing the sniffing. Right, that I agree with because it's all, <clears throat> yeah, but there's... There's some smells that definitely stand out, and you're like, okay, that's what that is. Yesterday, I smelled Lincoln's hair. Oh, he's got that little boy smell. Yeah, he usually just it's smells like, like sour, boy. Right? Yeah, it's like gross. Yeah. Everything about boys is gross. <laughs> but I go, your hair smells like McDonald's. Did you go to McDonald's today? And he goes, I went yesterday. Oh my God, that's great. I was so impressed with myself and also disgusted at his <laughs> lack of showering <laughs> and bathing. Hey, two days for the hair, that's fine. I'm like once a week. In the summer with little boys, it should really be. Yeah, they are, they have, they have, and it's a smell that's unlike anything else that's very specific to little boy. I, he was in the shower the other day and he's like, okay, I'm done. And I'm like, did you clean your butthole? And he was like, oh, wait. And he had to go back in and then he's like, okay, I'm done. And I'm like, did you clean your penis? He's like, oh, and I had to go back in again. How do you forget? Those are the two main. Yeah, those are the Parts. important ones. Yeah. Yeah. What did you clean? Right. Behind his ears, squeaky clean. <laughs> right. His big toe, spotless. <laughs> it's like your butthole. That's right. like the first yeah. stop on the uh, cleaning train. You know what? My, my brother was tell, talking to me about this, about like, what's the dirtiest place on your body? Oh. What would you guess is the the I place that ha- where they have the most bacteria? Like I if definitely would have said finger. Believe it or not, it's your forearm. Why? Because like that's say you your hands are dirty and you go to like wipe your forehead with your arm. People touch way more, and it, like when we go to wash our hands, some place that we often forget. So maybe you wash your hands like three times a day, or four times, or whatever. Oh, but you never wash your. That's forearm, true. I do wash you? my hands a lot more than my arms. Right, and okay. that's like doctors are like washing up to the elbows and everything. Yeah. But he said that's the dirtiest part. And then you want to know what the cleanest is that has the least amount of bacteria when they like take swabs and they looked at a bunch of people? Let me think. Okay. Is it your butthole? (laughs) What is it? I'll give you a hint. It's a hidden place. The back of your knee? Behind your ears. The one place where they're like, make sure you get behind your ears is actually the last place you need to get because it's the cleanest. Maybe it's different for boys though because I pull my hair behind my ear a yeah, lot yeah it seems yeah, like that would get dirty but maybe that oh good point yeah, I'll tell you what's say. not dirty what kiwi subscription boxes well i don't even know about this yes. tell me well that's because you don't have a child oh I, oh you're right but you need these because these are great gifts and they have um but i like to play with stuff too that's true they they do have boxes for older kids oh, like ba- you know okay. when they're like to up right. to 100 yes. or whatever. From children to 99 years old. <laughs> yeah. This is such a great idea, especially for summer for kids because oh, yeah. Kiwi Company sends these box boxes where it's a project. So like I think Ooh, I told you we yes, had the mechanical yes. sweeper and oh, then you can paint right. it and oh, then they can cool. play with it after they're done. So it's like, you and know, learn. when the kids are like, oh, I'm bored. All summer long. Right. There's no such thing. Where's your kiwi box? <laughs> Where's fine. your kiwi box? Um, and it comes once a month, so you can always have a project to work on, and then they can play with it. And it's nice. You could do with your kids, and they focus on a lot of like the STEAM, science, yes. technology, engineering, art, and math. Um, and you can choose like the age of your child, which box you want, and then uh, they have the fun and engaging projects to do. And it's just nice if you're going to... Yeah. Get a box. It might as well be something that will help them learn. KiwiCo is a convenient, affordable way to encourage your children to be anything they want to be. There's no commitment. You can cancel any time. Monthly options start at nineteen ninety five a month, including shipping. For our listeners, go to kiwico.com slash brain candy to get your first month for free. Every day counts when it comes to making a difference. So don't miss out on the opportunity. 
Again, go to kiwico.com slash brain candy, get your first month free. That's kiwico.com slash brain candy. You should just do it. Yeah. You get a free one, see if you like it. I feel like it'd be a cute thing to get because it's like that. I mean, that's like real inexpensive for like hours of entertainment. Right. Get like one for you and one for your friend who has a kid. And then they like can fun. do it separately and yeah. see which ones people made. Or they can like have a play date and then they, they bring their box. That's and, a good idea. Right? Because those play dates, it's always like. And then Mayhem. you turn into the... I know. So, the hired right. help clown. So it's like, okay, I'll get one and my friend will get one and then we'll like have play dates where we drink wine and our kids build stuff. That's a good idea. Yep. There you go. Sarah's Summer working plans. St- <laughs> Sarah's working it all out yep. for you. I'm just trying to plan when I have kids, like how I'm going to entertain them and just like <sighs> use you as my guinea pig. Well, you're definitely going to be better than me because you're more, you just are more engaged in kids than I am. I'm always like, what are you, t- what are you <laughs> doing? Okay, I'll get, I'm sure I'll, that'll wear, that'll Mm-mm. be worn off eventually. No, I think it's just na- like it comes naturally to you. It's just who you are because you are you have yeah. a childlike. I, I did sing a lot to your cat. What kind of song? You know, just like whatever. Made up doing. ones. Yeah. We always say she's a lava lady because her name's Lava even yeah. though we call her Mr. Meow. Yeah, it's okay. I called her everything. <laughs> I do love a made up song. You me too. I gotta say. Yeah. Did you bust out my banjo at all? No, I brought my ukulele though and I had some jam sessions with that. Nice. I mean it was just so nice out here. Like the sunshine. It's very peaceful, pool, isn't it? Just like jamming. Yeah. Yeah. It's a peaceful uh life. Yes, yes, yes. I was reading about this um paint company called Pharaoh and Ball, which I hadn't heard of. I'm mm-hmm. sure I've seen it like on Instagram or something, mm-hmm. but they have um, interesting names for their paints. Oh, I love those. I thought you would because you seem it's like, like nail polish color. You should name. have that job. Oh, you are not the first one to tell me that. Yeah, you would yeah. be good at that. Because like some of them are punny and like you know. Yeah, yeah. And these ones, they were saying like they have this one color that they call elephant's breath, and I know it's exactly a taupe, what that would look like. And they were saying it sells so much better than the other gray shades because the name is oh my so God, that's so funny engaging or whatever and they have one called dead salmon <laughs> and it really does look like a dead salmon and i just thought that was interesting how the human brain we see a color you would think it would just be like what color do you like mm-hmm. but the words are so important. totally important i mean anybody in advertising would be like Duh. <laughs> but it just it kind of makes me mad when I feel like the human brain is so stupid. There's a perfect red color that, of OPI nail polish, and I'll always remember because I think it has the best name. It's called "I'm Not Really a Waitress." Which Why? Is like, it kind of looks like like what color? That's really like, funny. You can almost picture it of like, oh, I'm not really a waitress. Of like, what color shade of red that would be? Wow. Of like, kind of. But like how a do you think that red. happened? And I. Do you think that the person actually saw a waitress wearing that and thought, oh, that's funny? Or do you think it just was like, let's be cute? Or Yeah, of like, oh, this is my day job, but I moonlight as a lounge singer. Right. And this is the red nail polish I right. wear as I do that. It seems like it fits. They should, I need more. Like I need to, to, to do know. an interview oh, with yep. someone that Ballet names it. Ballet slippers. Those are the, that's like the most popular yes. color by Essie. Yes. God, I know way too many names of nail polish colors off the top of my head. Yeah, oh, and they in this article it did learn a fun fact, which oh, is I love a fun fact. You know how everything's white now. You know that's the look mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah. most people go for yeah, that minimalist thing. But um, on Instagram, it photographs really well if you have like really rich colors, mm-hmm. and so a lot of people have that really dark ceiling mm-hmm. that makes everything look rich and mm-hmm. fancy, and they. We're saying that when that became popular, it was be- back in the day. Mm-hmm. It was because everyone had um, lamps and the smoke would make, oh, leave stains on the ceiling. And interesting. So it was like a high society thing, like if you didn't want to look shoddy. Okay. Isn't that fun? Yes. I love stuff like that. Me too. About why like those paint colors become... Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. even at pubs, often the ceiling will be real dark. I never um, knew that. You know, it creates a mood, but I'm sure that the origin has more to do with practicality than yes. just like, this looks good. All right. Um, but yeah, I just, they were saying also that when they kind of kind of don't know what to name something, they'll choose an, a word in English 
and then just translate it to French and then people like it better. That makes sense. You know, like just white will yeah. be chemise oh, oh, or, yeah. oh you know, gosh, stuff like that. does sound fancy. <laughs> right. And you think, oh, oh this yes, is classy. Yes, lace, when, chemise, lace. Like, yes. It's just annoying to me though that we're all Chantilly so stupid. Lace, that's what yeah. I'm thinking of. It's like, that's white. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. I just thought, boy, you don't really think about what all goes into yeah. a product. So but. like if you were to look at our couch right over there, it's like yeah. the kind of like a teal color. What name would you give that? <sighs> what are you calling it? Mm, I think it would be called, I mean, my instinct is like mermaid tears. Oh, mermaid tears. That's hilarious. I was going to call it like spilled ink. Oh, see that I would imagine would be more navy. Well, what made me think that though is because it matches your tattoos and oh. I thought of ink. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll keep working on it. Yes, There's is potential. Good. Yeah. They're like, this is like the wine smelling. There's no right or wrong answer. Here. Spilled ink <laughs> Except sounds there great. is. All right. Yeah. We'll... I like yours better. Mermaid <laughs> tears, like a sad mermaid. I'm sure that exists for something. Or like peacock, something peacock. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be like called like... Peacock feather. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I like like a name with two, like a, a what do you call it? Double entendre? Mm, uh, 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 Euphemism. Alliteration. Oh, that, oh, two words yeah. with the same letter. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So like... <laughs> I was way off. Peacock's pleasure. Oh. Or something like that. Okay, 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 okay. I like that. Peacock plume? Yes. (gasps) Yes. We got it. it. Sold. That's it. (laughs) We'll let Joy Joy Bird needs to rename their (laughs) fabric right now. Um, What else do you want to hear about the history of Jazzercise? Yes. Oh, my God. I used to go to those classes with my mom when I was little and sit in the stroller. And I remember them doing it. And they even, I used to watch when she would wake up in the morning, she would do her jazzercise and they would have Mickey's jazzercise, which was Mickey Mouse leading jazzercise videos. And I watched those almost every morning when I was a little kid. I can't believe your mom Mickey's did that. Mickey's Mousercise. Do, 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 do. Wow. Do, 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 do. Come on, everybody, let's mousercise. Mickey's Mousercise. Wow. I still remember the theme song. Gosh, yeah. Sarah, you must have been really fit. <laughs> fit. <laughs> Holy smokes, I didn't know that this was going to be a close to home <laughs> segment, but you shouldn't always know this with everything for you. <laughs> there was an article in I think it was The Atlantic, The History of Jazzercise, and I really enjoyed it because people make fun of Jazzercise a lot. It's mm-hmm. become sort of yeah. you know, a joke. Yeah. And that it's a bunch of these weird white ladies, like looking mm-hmm. ridiculous, mm-hmm. and they're like thong spandex over the shorts. <laughs> which I don't know why that was a thing. Oh my god, how did that happen? My mom owned those and wore them proudly. Why was that a thing? Yeah, it's not comfortable. It's not no. practical, and it doesn't oh. help the exercise. Even. Nope, it's just like it I just, just always think of Jamie Lee Curtis in what movie? Body Heat. Maybe that is it, where she's the jazz size instructor and John Travolta's in it, and she's doing like the hip thrust. Wait, and let she's me like, look. oh, we de-. it's it's one of the Jamie greatest Lee scenes. Curtis. And she's so good at it. And I'm like, she's nailing jazz size right now. Let me see what it's called. Perfect? I don't know. I think it's called Perfect. I've never heard of that. Me neither, but I've definitely seen the clip like a million times. It only got two stars. Oh, that, okay, well, at her, I give her jazz scene, jazz size scene five. Ha! Um, okay, so what I liked about the article, though, <laughs> is that it was pointing out how it has a reputation for being for white ladies, mm-hmm. but that really it is the opposite, where because there's not peacocking, yep. um, there's not that Lululemon th- sort of, you know, pr- yeah. what's that word? Snobby? Yeah. Um, think and competitive. Mm-hmm. It's like, come as you are, wear yes. a t-shirt. You can look gross. Um, and then... Like now it's like this. That's what it's saying. Yeah. But it's like a lot of low income folks, yes. they meet in churches and yes. um, fire halls and stuff like that. So it's a better option for folks who might yes. be low income. And then, you know, they're more inclusive uh, for everybody, which and I like. the... Uh, the- moves are, yeah, you can do it at different fitness levels and yeah. make it more complicated or, or easier or whatever for you, what your needs are. They were saying the lady that founded it, she started it in, I think, San Francisco and um, started it on a military base, 
which worked really oh, yeah. well because then when the ladies had to move, as you do, uh-huh. um, they were sad that they were going to miss it. And so she started a certification program nice. so they could take it with them. And then it became the second biggest franchise company in the world outside of Domino's. Oh. Which is amazing. Get it, girl. Yeah. She's a genius. She is. And what a clever business model. Who would think like yes. exercise could be franchised? Man, that's great. Yeah. And she's still doing it. She's still jazzercising. Her wow. daughter her daughter runs like the operations. Um and uh they were saying that it what it does is just like anything, including this show, it's not about the content, it's about the community that you yes. establish. Yeah. And so like our audience isn't really coming to us for facts. Mm-hmm. They're coming to us to feel like they're with their the girlfriends. Poo stories. <laughs> got, <laughs> they're, it, got it. <laughs> for our uh, terrible content. But we, you create a community, and that's what Jazzercise did. It was totally community through choreographed fitness. Yes. And I thought, okay, this is cool, because I thought it was going to be just like making fun of it and yeah, kind of poo-pooing it, which is what tends to happen when anything is feminine. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing it said. It, before Jazzercise came along, there really wasn't fitness models for mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. It was like... They might, a gym might have a day where they do like women's And it's weird. Like I saw, did you ever watch the show, the, what, something Mrs. Mabel? Oh, Marvelous. Marvelous Mrs. Mrs. Maisel. Maisel. I was wrong on almost every Mm -hmm. one of those words. Um, There was a scene in there where all the wives go to a workout class and it's so bizarre, but I knew, I know they existed. Yeah. Where it was... Some of them would wear high heels yeah. and do weird stuff. Yes. And it was kind of like had the, I, I don't know, like the, the I, I could see it as being like primitive jazzercise almost, yeah. you know, and how that evolved. And yeah. it would be like, okay, little circles with your arms, to, you know? Yeah. And I could picture my aunt going to these kind of classes and that's like Was what your mom did. doing it as a means of... Um, Losing weight or it was like about- straight up working out fitness. Like she, my mom was fit and into all that stuff. Get out of here. Oh yeah. There's a picture from her honeymoon where she's standing on a rock in Hawaii with like her arms stretched out and she is so toned and has the strongest arms. And I just remember looking at one, that when I was little and I'm like, dang, my mom is so fit. Really? Oh yeah. And she would always say it's cause she carried heavy bags when she did wardrobe and would just sling all the clothes over her arms and yeah. carry them everywhere. And just her, she just moved a lot. I was reading this book um, called Into the Planet, and it's about a female cave diver. Wow, spelunker. Scoop. What? A that? spelunker. What is that? A cave diver. Why do they call it that? Because spelunking is the act of exploring caves. Okay. So wonder why that wasn't is... covered. Oh, really? I <laughs> Yeah. But when I'm reading sort of the, what all it takes mm-hmm. to just do the thing you're enjoying is enormous. Like it's what you're saying about your mom carrying all that crap. Like yeah. I would be oh, done right. two hours in, like this is not for me. Yeah. I don't like to be uncomfortable, right. but just to get in the water, you know, you have to do all the <gasps> safety checks. You have all that gear. You yes. have to prepare for everything. Oh, she goes underwater, under scuba, w- scuba caves. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I thought is that not just splunking? Like, no, that's like regular cave, like you rappel down into a cave, like underground caves. Oh. But scuba, that's even scarier. Scary. Forget it. Yeah, she's done like Guinness World Book of Records. Oh, that's like, the most terrifying thing ever. Yeah. And I, everything I read, I was like, why does no, she no, do no, this? No, no. She seems amazing and it really impresses me. And I love when women get into fields where yes. there's not a lot of other women. Yeah. But I couldn't do it. You have to be so... You have to have such a strong mind. Yes. In that c- scenario. In every Just way. scuba diving, period. Like I went on my honeymoon and Landon doesn't scuba dive, but I went by myself. And, well, not you always have to have a partner, but I had an instructor. And we were going down to explore some caves and I had never done that before. Were and you scared? Yes. Yeah. And there's a, you know, with scuba diving for me, you don't go that often. I don't go that often. So when there's years in between where you don't go, you're like, oh my God, do I remember everything? How does everything work? Like, yeah. I got to make sure I know everything because like, it's all good until it's bad and then it's, you're dead. So I'm like, I need to make sure I know what I'm doing down here. 
So I was nervous for that. And then you really have to, it's a different kind of breathing where you breathe out of your mouth the whole time. Yeah, I don't like it. And you have to like tell yourself to inhale and exhale. It doesn't feel very natural. And if you try to breathe naturally, you'll end up, you can't do it. So, um, so I'm nervous for that already. And then we dive down and we go into this cave and there are probably like 10 other groups diving with everybody has their own instructor. Some people it's like one instructor for three people. Yeah. And I don't know these people from Adam. Like I, they, I don't know how long they've been certified. The other people who are diving and it's like, I know I'm good down here. But what I worry about is being in confined spaces with somebody who freaks out and then they panic and then they grab something close to them and they accidentally grab my my mouthpiece or something like that Mm -hmm. or whatevs. And so we go into this cave and there are a bunch of people in there already, like in different corners, not a bunch, but there are like five people in this cave that's probably like no bigger than, mm, I don't know, an eight by eight room and maybe a little bit bigger, but it feels crowded and there's only one way in and one way out and we go in. And we're like supposed to be like looking along the side of the walls. And my instructor's flashlight goes out. And it was everything I could do to not fully panic right there. And he's like, gives me like, I can sort of see. And he gives me like that, are you okay signal? And I'm like, nope. I got, nope, really? I'm not okay. I got to get out of this cave. Really? Because I had a full-blown panic. Like, I can't see in here. There's no, I don't know where the exit is. There are other people who I can't see. Like, I don't know where anything is. It was really scary. And I had never understood what a panic attack feels like until that moment. And I had that realization, like, under the water. Get me out of here. Oh, my God, this is a panic attack. And I feel like I am freaking out. And I had to fully, like, talk myself like you're okay. Yeah, you're right you about go, having like, a strong mind. You have to. Yeah. And I felt like, wow, at that moment, I mean, it could have gone either way for me if I didn't. My driver was like, you're good. Stay calm. That's the other thing I don't like about it is that let's say you make the decision, depending on how deep you are, mm-hmm. you you have to right. decompress. That's the thing. Or maybe they call it recompress yeah. at that point. But yeah. you can't just go up. Correct. And I don't like that. And your instincts tell you. Go. Go. Yeah. And you have to fight your instincts, and that feels really scary. Like they basically have to fight the natural yes. human impulse yes. the entire time. whole time. And that freaks me out. Once you get into that place where it's almost like surrendering or accepting that you're okay, Yeah, it's the most... Oh, I love it. I love scuba diving. Like, you remember when we went? Yeah, I love it. It was our first experience, my first time with you. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite pictures It's one of my favorite experiences. Yes. Being under the water like that. I And I did it um, in the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, cool. I mean, I feel so lucky. Yeah. But to -hmm. do it at her level. Oh, forget it. And how many things can go wrong and do. Yeah. Get me the heck out of here. Right. Like you could, I'm, it's kind of like how I feel about camping. Like you could live in a house. We, <laughs> there are reasons why we have houses. Right. And it's kind of like that. Like there is a reason why we live on land, dummy. When all the scuba divers will say, well, I get to explore two thirds more of the earth than you do. Yeah. And, and they're cool. right. They it's just right. not for everyone. Right. Anyway, gotta yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta go scuba dive. See ya. Check you later. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.